She is. Hello, hello. Turn up my volume. I never have it loud enough. <laughs> hey there. Well, hi. How come you can't see me? Uh, usually you'll have to, somewhere at the bottom, there will be, it'll oh. look like a little video camera. Yeah. I think there'll be a line through it. So you have to give it permission. Yep, that's yeah. me. I'm never prepared for anything. <laughs> How are you? I'm well. How are you? I'm doing great. I was just watching you blush when oh. you were listening to, ja <laughs> to Jacob Morgan. Oh, he's so good. He's so well, good. I, I follow all of the different production houses and I love when they do narrator samples. And so that one from Lyric popped up and I thought, oh, they're being bold. I usually have to go in and edit out certain words just to make sure so no. we'll see if that video stays up. I don't know. <laughs> I know, I know. They may take it down, but yeah. Right. We, had, we asked for some good ones. Just, you know, um, think of I mean, but there were so many. There I know. were so many good ones <laughs> that you could think from. That man will live rent free in my head until the day I die. He just, I, okay. When I was writing that book, when I was writing chapter 18, and that, you probably know the bathroom chapter. Oh. Okay. When oh. I was writing that chapter, I was like, I can't write this. Like, people are gonna, I don't know that my audience is really ready for this. I'm not really sure, but I had to do it. I mean, it was Blaine, you know, you have yeah. to stick with the character. Right. Oh, what a great character too. <laughs> he was so good. He was so good. I'm so glad that you liked him. I, I really did. I really did. Um, so before we start talking about the book, because we just hopped on and I want people to be able to find us on here. Um, from one curly girl to another, I have to know like, what what products do you use for your oh hair? Oh my God. Um, I don't really know the names of them. Do you want me to get them real quick? They're right here. Sure. I'm okay. always, Hold yeah, on. I'm always asking about curly hair stuff because okay. you know. Give me 30 seconds. Yeah, grab it. Hello, Bria. How are you? I know, Melissa's so great, isn't she? Hi, Caitlin. Welcome. Thanks for popping in. Hopefully I won't drop this. Okay, you're gonna laugh because I don't really use anything expensive. Um, lavender mint. Oh yeah, my husband uses that same brand. Really? So I use mm -hmm. just the, the moisture one. And conditioner and shampoo. Um, a friend of mine is a hairdresser and she came down and I was using something else that smelled good. I don't know what it was. And she was like, oh no, you can't use that. You have to get this. So this is all that I use for shampoo and conditioner. And then um, I recently found this coconut cream. Mm -hmm. It is amazing. It's coconut cream by Mark Anthony. And it smells heavenly, like coconut, and it just is like a cream that you put in before you dry <laughs> me, your hair. Me not leaning forward like I could actually smell it. I'm like, mm. where do you want to smell? <laughs> and then the other thing I use that I swear by, and it really makes me look cheap, um, but I don't know. I got this probably 15 years ago, and I've been using it ever since. It's just a generic brand of the cream by Paul Mitchell. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, and I got the cream by Paul Mitchell and I didn't like it as much. So I don't know if there's like a little difference, but this shit is everything. This awesome. is the best. Like, the, and these two together just make your curls hold. Ah, okay. So. Well, I'm going to get you to send me those when we're done here. Oh, I've been oh, using, I don't know if you've heard of Lus, L-U-S brands. I they haven't have heard of it. I haven't shampoo, used Shampoo, conditioner, and then it's just one product. It's this all-in-one, but it doesn't have the, it's not sticky. It doesn't have bonding agents. So it don't, it won't make your hair more curly, but it just helps your curls natural curl pattern. And I've yeah. been using that for a couple of years and really like it. I'll have to try that too. That's I just, good. my it's curls are like frizzy. <laughs> my curls get so frizzy. And I was out in the rain today, so I have even bigger hair than normal. So 
<laughs> oh, I know. Like anytime I'm having a really good hair day, it's always on a day with really low humidity. Like when oh, I came, yeah. I was in Vegas for love in Vegas and my yeah. hair, I didn't have to wash it the whole time I was out there. Oh, I, I just that. kept like, I would tweak it every morning with the curling yeah. iron and no humidity. Oh, my God, this is amazing. <laughs> I would give anything for that. I would give anything for it. Yeah. But I live I in the South, so... We have I humidity just, all I the just time. have to show you that I have my dog with me and she is quite Aww. needy. So <laughs> when you, she's probably going to at some point come in here and just like, you know, try and take over. But in the meantime, That's I would okay. just pet her. <laughs> That's okay if she does. Yeah. So oh. how are you? What's if uh, you've been all over the place? How are you? I, I'm great. I love going to all those book signings. They're so <laughs> much fun. I didn't even know they existed last summer. Didn't even what? know it was a thing. No. What? How can you yeah. not know? I did not know. I mean, I I started getting back into reading around 2020, but the extent of the reading I did was just through my library or a Kindle Unlimited. Well, and then I got into audio too. So you weren't you wouldn't have seen any signings in 2020 or 2021. So you're exactly. actually not that far behind. I just I used to do signings 15 years ago. You know, 10, 15 years ago. Yeah, I mean, I knew that, I guess I should, I should back that up. I knew that people went to book signings, but in my mind, I thought it was an author just showed up at like Barnes and Noble. And that was kind of the extent, yeah. unless you were going to like a Comic-Con or yeah. like some kind of big, everybody's dressed up in costumes, but not, you know, specifically romance genre where you could meet narrators and authors. So and fun, isn't it? Oh, so much fun. I hadn't been to a conference in a hundred years. I don't even know when my last one was just because my publishing schedule is so busy. And my assistant Lisa is the one who convinced me to go to Indies Invade uh, Philly. And the whole time that we were going there I was like, oh my God, I need to be writing and I'm writing in the car and I'm stressed out. And then I get there and it's like, everything changes. Like your whole world brightens. There are just, eh, Everybody is so excited to be there and so nice and friendly. And I, I loved it. I mean, I, I really was happy that I went. I, yeah, I mean, Philly was great too. It felt very laid back compared to some of the other events I've been to this year. It was smaller. It felt more intimate. It felt like you weren't rushed when you were talking with authors. Well, that was one of the things that I really liked about it, because mm -hmm. with, with a lot of the bigger conferences, you don't get that time. It's like sign a book and be gone. Yeah, Vegas was a little bit like that. I did not have an opportunity to see everybody I wanted to see because it was just so short and lines were long, you know, yeah. to wait to speak to people. And you only had four hours, five hours. So, yeah, I get that. <laughs> Well, when I was looking you up a little bit, uh, you've sold 10 million copies of your books. Yeah, you've written was... over 100 books. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You are a um, USA Today, Wall Street Journal, New York Times bestselling author. That's incredible. Thank you. I yeah. mean, I've seen your name pop up over the last two years. Every time I've gotten on Kindle Unlimited, I'm looking at books, I'm looking at romance, your name always pops up. Your books always pop up. I've always had some of them stashed away in my TBR for later. But well, um, I don't you have a lot of books on KU. Um, for Kindle Unlimited, I only have like, I think 10 books out on Kindle Unlimited or 11 books. And those are the ones that are published through Montlake. Everything else is um, wide because okay. Yeah, I I just I have had such a big audience across all retailers that when the opportunity to go exclusive to Amazon came up, I just could I can't do that to my readers. I know a lot of authors are and have and some are pulling out now and there's all that rigmarole, but I just I feel like my lo my readers have been so loyal to me that I don't want to take my books away from them. You know, they're, they're readers who are reading through from book one all the way to 117. And I don't know where they are. You know what I mean? I don't know if they're on number 40 or number 25 or number 90. And I don't want to take away the books, you know, that they're that they read through different retailers. So 
But yeah, there's a lot. I used to write 10,000 words a day and that made it, you know, my production was like 12 to 15 books a year. Um, I know it was insane. And I don't even like now, I have no idea how I did it then. I, I, I don't know, making all of the rest of us look like slackers over here. No, <laughs> that's no, no, incredible. No. I was I nuts. That's so I don't know amazing. how I did it. I did it while I was raising my kids and I have no idea how. And uh, which is even more amazing. Yeah, but but now I'm like, okay, 3,000 words a day, that's good. <laughs> I can't put out that many books anymore. And my books are longer. My books are like 100 and usually 100 to 135,000 words now because yeah. the stories are deeper. You know, they're mm -hmm. the one that you just read, that was like a 400 page book. I think that was like 125,000 words or something. Yeah. Um, they're big. You know, they're, they're the stories are deeper. Um, I don't repeat, you know, and I don't do anything formulaic. Um, so it's not like I just, you know, first of all, I never plot, but it's not like I just plot the same book and change the location and the title. And I, that would drive me nuts. It would be no fun. Well, Jasmine just asked if you have a favorite book oh or God. if it's too hard to do a favorite book, like one that you're especially proud of. Yeah, I have a couple that I'm especially proud of. So there's a book called um, The Wicked Aftermath. And that is, I will have you ugly crying in chapter one. Like rip your heart out, cry in chapter one. Okay. And it, it's one of my favorite books because it was such a, um, it, it deals with grief. And it was such a big subject to conquer in a romance and i put it all on the page so i was really proud of that um i take a lot of risks that other authors don't i have a book about a heroine who's blind um and that's called touched by love i'm super proud of that um i have a book where a, her a heroine loses her leg during the story and um and that's not something that's typically done. And I'm really proud of that. That's Thrill of Love. I'm, I'm super proud of that. Um, and then there are books like that I'm proud of for different reasons, like the even His Wicked Ways. I have to tell you that I will never claim somebody as my favorite hero, but <laughs> I was, I, I love Blaine. I so hard for Blaine when I was writing the book that literally for just weeks after I wrote it was like on this high, like when you have a new boyfriend, you know, it's like on this high. And I kept thinking to myself, this is ridiculous. He's fictional. Like he's not even real. Why am I still thinking about him? But I just, he, there was something about his journey and, and I'm not going to say anything about the end of the book and people do not jump ahead and read the end first, but I was so in love with the end of that book. And, um, and it just made me feel like we saw we saw this part of Blaine and a part of like Reese was such a private person, but she shared her whole um, sexy life with us. She shared her whole life with us and Blaine was so domineering. So at the end of that book, I did something that I wanted to do. And I'm not going to give a spoiler, but um, but I did something that I wanted to do. And it's probably one of my favorite endings ever. It's so, a good one. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so I just I loved it so much. I mean that that book it really caught me at the very beginning, and <laughs> so and I typically I do go into many books completely blind. Yeah. Since I'm mostly audio, I tend to follow the narrators. You know, people that I know that is gonna they are gonna give me a great performance no matter what the book is about. Right. I'm going to enjoy it. That and I just love the romance genre anyway. Yeah. Um, so yeah, at the very beginning of this book, like you feel this, you know, um, dominant protector. I mean, he just steps in and um, he jumps off the page. He really does, doesn't he? <laughs> yeah. And I mean, Jacob Morgan. Oh, you can't go this wrong. character. <laughs> uh, I, I use him and Aiden Snow so often. I just, I oh, love yes, those so deep cool. voices, you know? I just, oh, there's something so great about it. I apologize. My dog is chewing a bone. If it I gets know, I can hear. If it's too loud, just let me know and I'll put in my headset. Is it too loud? No, it's fine. Just for a second, I thought, what is that noise? And then I remembered your dog was over there. Well, let me let me put in my headset. Give me one second. Because okay. that I don't want everybody signing on and wondering what that is. Hold on one second. Jasmine, we'll ask her that question when you come back or when she comes back. 
Because that was a question I had too, since she has so many and there's so many different series. Okay. So Jasmine was asking. Sorry about that. That's okay. Jasmine was asking um, if there is a good place to start if someone is new to your books, because you have so many different series and so many different standalones. Yeah. So here's what I always recommend. I recommend anybody, unless you don't like, like if you don't like bikers, then don't start with my most recent book. But I recommend anybody just pick up my most recent book and then see if you like my voice. Because if you like my voice, you then can go through and look at the different series and see what series is attractive to you. Um, but I can tell you, if you like bikers, I would start with True Blue, which is the first book in my original Whiskey series. I have three biker series. I have the Whiskey's Dark Nights at Peaceful Harbor. And then I have the, their cousins, the Dark Knights at Redemption Ranch. And then I have the Wick, uh, yeah, then I have the Wicked's who are the cousins, um, Dark Knights at Bayside. So I would start with True Blue if you like bikers so that you get the, the first book in the whole biker series. If you like um, uh, really emotional sort of small town beach reads where, with some tortured heroes, um, really great grumpy sunshine and single parent, uh, then I would go for uh, The Steals at Silver Island. And all of my series are good. <laughs> I will tell you that you'll get different stories in every single one, but there's something about each one that makes every series special. And every book ends with a complete story. So you don't have cliffhangers. You don't feel like you've walked into, you know, a room and you don't know who the people are. Like you, you get to meet them all as you go through the book. Um, and people show up from different series, but it's never overwhelming. You know, it's not like you see too many people from too many series, but like one person might be friends, one Braden might be friends with a Remington, you know, and, and you'll get that sort of thing. Um, for people who are looking for lighter reads, just that aren't dark, but just something really fun and sexy and upbeat, I would go back to my old series called, my backlist series called um, Seaside Summers. It is a freaking hilarious series. The whole thing, it's a, based on a group of friends. Um, they're full of pranks. The Steels have pranks too, but the interesting thing about the Seaside Summer series is that I did most of those pranks with my friends here at the Cape. And so, <laughs> so it's, yeah, so super fun stuff. Um, and that focuses on like a group of women and then some of their guy friends and just they're they're really good most of most of what i write is small town um but if you're looking for like hardcore billionaires then i would pick up the wild boys after dark or the bad boys after dark they're my hardcore billionaires if you want small town billionaires i would go with any of the bradens my my newest braden series is the bradens and, and montgomery's um so maybe start there and you know see how you like it and then if you go through that then you can go back and also I'm, i mean i'm giving you way too much information i'm sorry <laughs> um well i mean but, i've had a few books so yeah so but on my website there is a link that says freebies and if you click on it you get a drop down menu one of the things that is down there is reader goodies and if you click on reader goodies then you'll come to a page that has um Everything you can print out for free, of course, family trees, a publication list, reading orders, series orders, everything. Family trees. Oh, yes. That would be so helpful for me with some of these series that I read because I try to keep track of all the details in my mind. And sometimes I'll even make notes for timelines and things like that. That's really helpful for readers. Yeah, we've got it all. I even have a public, I have a, I have a series list by family. And then I have a series, and then I have a, a reading order by publication date, which shows all 100 and whatever books um, and the date they were published, because that's the order in which they were written. So mm -hmm. a lot of people who start, and if they see that they love my, you know, one or two series, they'll go back to book number one, which is Sisters in Love, and then they'll read through by publication order, because since that's the order in which I wrote them, um, it's kind of easier sometimes when you see the crossover characters because you've just met them, you know, in the prior book or two books ago. So, yeah, I try to give my readers as much as possible, you know, give them all the goodies so that it makes it easy for them to follow. 
Well, and that's something that um, I've been telling people about this newest release that you have, His Wicked Ways, because I, it's book five in a series, yeah. but it's truly a standalone. I had not read the previous four, um, but I think you do a really good job of when you have those other characters, yeah. um, giving just enough information to the reader to understand what's going on, how they're connected without the reader feeling really lost. Thank you. I yeah. try really hard. Who are without... these people again? Yeah. So it just gave me little snippets of, oh, I bet they had a previous book. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I bet their story is like book two or book three. I should go look that up. So yeah. you do and a really the... good job with that. Thank you. Thank you. And not, I, I, I just remembered you do audio. So, um, so you wouldn't have seen the other goodies are in there that are in there. But like in the eBooks, I include a family tree usually. And, um, and then in the back of the book, I al always include the series list. Very good. So I know yeah, I, I wish that there was a way, I don't know, for, for audio listeners to somehow get some of those little tidbits that authors will include. I mean, I don't know yeah. how to make that work, but I don't know, but if you check maybe, um, I mean, I'm sure there are other authors who do the same as I do where they have it available on their website. So you may be able to get it that way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I don't know. It would be good though. I'm, oh, that's okay. It would, it would be really, it would be a good thing. And that's something now that I have to think about is how to get, like, maybe I should start having on my website, uh, on my audiobook page, goodies for audiobook listeners, and then include great. some of that stuff just for each book. That's, a, or that's maybe, a really good idea. Or maybe for the audio listeners, you know, at the um, the credits at the very beginning of the audio book yeah. or in the author's acknowledgement at the end of the book um, to put some little snippet in there to help direct people. To that's know a good idea. To do go you listen to those? Do you listen to the opening and the closing credits? I do. Oh, good. Okay. I wasn't sure. I do. I do. I, because I feel like the author's note or the author's acknowledgement at the end of the book. Yeah. I didn't, I did not used to read those, but I do now. I always listen to them if they're there or if they're in the book, I read them just because I feel like there's usually some really helpful information in there. Yeah. Um, the author usually says something about, you know, what that series has meant to them, or if there's a specific thing like grief or yeah. some kind of trauma that's happening in the story what, um, you know, if there's additional resources that people can go to learn more about these things, or this is what impacted me and this is why I wrote this story, or these are the people that I spoke to that informed my information about this issue, whatever it is. I don't think I include that in the um, audiobooks. I do in my ebooks and paperback, but I don't think I do in the audiobooks. Some authors do and some authors don't. Yeah, but I always listen to them if they are there. Now, okay, well, that's good to know. <laughs> and then there are sometimes when I get um, like an early copy, that stuff will not be included, but then perhaps it gets added on later. At the end, sure. And then a lot of times I will read while I listen. So even if it's not there in the audio, if I have the ebook and it's there, then I'll just. Then you have it. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I'm looking to see if we've missed any questions for you. Audible books are the best with having kids. Absolutely. <laughs> oh, without a doubt. You sit down and eyeball read. You put those earbuds in. You can't hear the kids going, Mom, Mom. <laughs> Listen, they're the best, too, when you have a dog that you have to walk. Because oh, I have mine in all the time when I'm walking her. Yes, I have a friend. That's the only time she listens to audiobooks. She's very new to audio, but that's the only time when she goes out and walks her dog. Yeah, yeah. I yes. listen in the morning, too, and I take walks in the morning, and I always listen. Yeah, I I listen all kinds of different ways. I listen <laughs> while I'm getting ready in the morning, doing my hair and makeup, um, you know, cooking and cleaning and driving. Yeah. Um, I like to puzzle I know that makes me yeah. sound really boring, but I love No, it doesn't. Puzzles. No, it doesn't. I, I am a puzzleaholic. I don't have time to do them right now, but I used to do them all the time. Oh, yeah. I bet you like Scrabble too. I do like Scrabble. Right? 
<laughs> I'm terrible at it, but I love it. It's so fun. I love it. I love it. It's I have one, one of those, of those fancy um, special edition ones where the, the table rotates. With the drawer. Yes, you keep all your little <laughs> tiles in there. Yeah, I have it too. We we have it. My brother has a bonus edition. It's like twice as big and has twice as many like little squares. And then they have um they have like quadruple points on some of them. It's crazy. Fancy. Yeah, but he also plays where he doesn't like to keep score. So he'll say, Do you have an A? I'll give you an S if you give me an A. <laughs> I'm like, that's no fun. <laughs> He just has fun creating the words. That's it. So speaking of audiobooks, like you have so many audiobooks. Have you always loved audio or was it something that you got into and then you started creating audio for your backlist? So I started creating it for my backlist when somebody said, why don't you have audio? You know, and I just, I just hadn't thought about it. Um, and then I hired one gentleman to do a number of my backlist titles and uh, BJ Harrison, he did a good job, but I didn't know enough at the time to realize how big of a difference the narrator makes. Um, yeah, so uh, yes, huge. I, for the last couple of years, I've only hired the A-list narrators. Um, you know, as soon as I realized there were A-list narrators, then I started hiring them. Um, and so, so, when I created the backlist, it was, or you know, the, the first probably 50 books. Um, it was just because I realized I don't have this and this is a market. People want to listen to my books. You know, I need to get this out there. So, so I got them out there. I did not become a fan of audiobooks. This makes me sound horrible, but I didn't become somebody who actually listened to them until probably three years ago, two or three years ago, because I was mostly a paperback reader. Like it, it took funny. me a while to even get to my Kindle. Like I just, there's something about holding a book Same. that I just love. Yeah. Same with me. So there's no shame in that whatsoever. <laughs> it's like, I will see people on here um, and on Instagram, they'll say things sometimes like, um, oh, I know I'm really late to this, but I finally got around to reading this book. And I wish we could just like, I mean, I, I've, I've said things like that too, but we should just, yeah. you know, that whole culture, like, that's okay. It's okay. There's so many books out there and books it is okay. Books don't have you, expiration dates. Right. Like, it's okay that you just discovered a book that just happened to be super popular three years ago. That's wonderful. Right. We're excited that you're reading it or people who are just now starting to listen to audiobooks. It's like, right. So glad that you've decided to join us. Like it's and okay it's, that you're just now getting into it. And it's going to change. I mean, it, that kind of thing is going to continue going on. You know, mm -hmm. we're, we are going to have people who just, who just discover audiobooks. 10 years from now. Now, audiobooks may be something different 10 years from now, you know, but I, in other words, it doesn't, I, I think that that will continue happening. Um, but TikTok has just brought everything to a head. You know, t suddenly TikTok is like where if you might see four or five books all the time. Um, but then you get people who say, oh, I saw these books hyped on TikTok and I bought them. I'm not taking any more recommendations from TikTok. <laughs> so it's really funny that, you know, that the way that, that, uh, books are, books are so subjective. Like so you can have 15 people listen to the same book and have 15 different opinions. Right. Right. Narration is subjective. Stories yeah. are subjective. That's why I also think we have to be really careful on social media or even in reading reviews <clears throat> to watch people talk about them subjectively. Yes. Because sometimes I'll see people on here and they'll get kind of angry. They're like, you lied to me about this book. <laughs> no, I, <laughs> no, I gave you my opinion. I actually really enjoy it. It doesn't mean that you are going to like it the same. Same with right. narrator, someone who... I really connect to their voice and their acting style. That does not mean that everybody's going to feel that way. So right. I'm always really careful with my, um, I'll be a little more critical in like an audible review um, or in a Goodreads review. But if I'm on social media, I, if I really don't enjoy something, I'm just not going to talk about it. Right. Because at this point with my platform, I'm not going to say something negative about a narrator if I don't connect to it because I don't want to dissuade somebody from trying 
yeah. that book or listening to that person because it might resonate with them in a completely different way. Absolutely. There, it, it's really disturbing how much hate there is across TikTok. I am somebody who doesn't like the word hate, and I'm somebody who believes everybody should have their own opinions, you know, and you should be allowed to have your own opinions. And there's so much negativity that goes on on TikTok, and it just makes me want to go swipe, 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 you know, and just hit the pages like yours where it's positive stuff. And it may be different than it may be different than my opinion, but it's going to help somebody else, you know, Sure. It just, it's, it's a whole different, th this whole culture on TikTok is very different than any other social culture. Yeah, I think so too. I mean, I don't know. I'm trying to think Instagram. I don't feel like, <laughs> I feel like some of the, um, more salacious, uninvited, comments sliding into the dms that happens way more on <laughs> ig than it does here yeah i and agree i mean i because i've had some posts that have gone more viral over on instagram and sometimes they you do not always want to go viral <laughs> you really I don't know. because no, I know. if it's not hitting your intended audience like who you want to see that video then what's the point because then you get people who just don't understand what you're doing or you end up really on the wrong side of the internet with males who are being very inappropriate. Yeah. We get <laughs> and not those realizing that you're doing a book promo and you're talking about a book and they think you are inviting all kinds of things in your DMs. That has never happened to me on this platform. Really? It hasn't. Mm -mm. Not on TikTok. So in those ways, TikTok feels a lot safer. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that funny? I just I see it's the Wild West over there. It's it's wild. That's I think that's really funny because I get I have a personal page here on TikTok, and then of course I have my professional page. And on my personal page, I get a lot of the really strange, um, really strange people who come into my DMs. But it's interesting because I don't do like my my professional page, there's a lot of dirty stuff on that. There's not on my personal page. So I don't get why I, I don't understand why I'm getting the people there and not on my professional one. But I, I just saw a comment that was really interesting. And uh, somebody, I think it said charity, or I, I couldn't really tell because I don't have my glasses on. But um, she said, I know I no longer say you're going to love this. I say, uh -huh. I hope you're going to love this. So love smart. It. Yeah, yeah. That so is so smart because unless you really know that person, yeah, and know what know. they like, you <laughs> don't really know what they're gonna like. Yes, yeah. and my TBR exploded when I got on this app as well last year. <laughs> I have a question for you. So, have you recommended a book on here on TikTok? Right, you're going through TikTok. You're on there for a few hours, and you get a hundred recommendations. Mm -hmm. How many of those actually end up on your TBR? And how many do you listen to within a month? Oh. That that you've gotten on your TBR. I know you you get a lot of arcs and things like that. So probably your time is limited. But I'm really curious about how often you take a recommendation and actually listen to it. That's a great question. Uh, let's see. Yes, because people will give me recommendations all the time. Sometimes yeah. it depends if more than one person, like if I'm hearing about a certain book over and yeah. over again, specifically for me based off of what I talk about, um, I am more likely to try to prioritize that yeah. audio book. Um, but as far as just like adding stuff to my physical TBR that I have on Goodreads, you know, I keep up with everything there. Yeah. Um, I would say probably maybe three out of 10. Okay. Three out of that's 10. Actually, that's more than I thought. Yeah. I, because what I'll do, like I said, I don't, I don't usually go and read a bunch of blurbs. I like to go in blind. Uh, but if there's an audiobook, I will go and see who the narrators are. And I'll see if it's someone that I already tr trust and love, or if it's a new narrator, then I also, I always love to discover new narrators. Sure. I don't just limit myself. 
Um, so I will go, I will listen to some samples. I'll see what other books they've worked on. Um, I'll go check out their social media pages and things like that will also bump something farther up yeah. on my list. Interesting. Okay. That's good to know. Yeah. Ravenhood, Sick Love. Uh, the, I read or listened to the Ravenhood trilogy because of TikTok. I did too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I went into it. So here's the thing. I'm I'm not typically a joiner or a follower. Usually if there's some kind of trend going on, it I don't know if it's like this rebellious streak in me, but I just, when everybody wants to do it, I dig my heels in. I go, mm, no. Okay, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> do so everybody kept talking about the Ravenhood. And so I thought, okay, I know the narration is going to be wonderful. You. There's a lot of hype about these books. Is it worth the hype? And then I am not going to cry. I'm not going to be one of those people. I'm just going <laughs> to, it was amazing. I mean, the audiobooks, oh, they were just so incredible. And of course I cried. Yeah. Um, but I also cried for different reasons, I think, than why a lot of people get emotional with that story. Because yeah, I, it and took I was me also a while. Crying. Go ahead, go ahead a while to read it like at, at first I was like I'm not going to read it no I'm not you know there's too much there was just too much hype for me um and so I, I thought I wasn't going to and then I don't know a couple of months went by and I thought to my and I was looking for something I was going for a walk one morning looking for something and and just that kept coming back in my head and I thought okay I'll try it and I tried it and it's not my normal type of read um and there were, and I didn't expect to like it because honestly, I didn't like the nickname pup <laughs> that bothered me at first. Um, and so that was one thing. And, and it, so many unanswered questions and loose ends. And as a writer, that's really hard to listen to because I hear my editor's voice in my head going, this is going to leave the reader with too many questions. You need to answer that, you know. Um, so I didn't expect to really like it. I, and I, so I thought, okay, well, I'll just, I'll just keep listening and see how it is. And then the next day I found myself wanting to listen to the rest of it. Um, so I, I ended up, I really liked it. I thought it was really well done. Did you go but all the way through? You went all the I way did, through? I did. I did. Um, I liked the first two books better than the third one. Uh, I know, I mean, I can understand why she did the third one. Mm -hmm. Um, and I guess I don't know how I feel about the third one really, but I, but I, I like, I liked it and I'm glad that we had that wrap up, but there were some things about it that I thought maybe it would have been better without having that third one, but I'm not sure. Like I, you know, mm -hmm. I, oh, know. So I, ne I needed that one. I felt like that answered a lot of the questions that I had. Oh, it did answer a lot of questions, but I For kind sure. of liked having questions. <laughs> I kind of liked that. Like, Okay, now you know that everybody who's reading this book might have different opinions about like what happened here and what happened here, you know, and why this happened. It's a good thing that she wrote book three. And I and I am glad that I listened to it. Um, okay. But I just I and I, I listened to it a long time ago. So right now, you know, I can't really remember all the details of it. But I remember at one point I was like, mm, you know, would this have been better if I hadn't read this one? And I just read the first two. Yeah, no, it was know. interesting because um, <laughs> I have some good friends that were obsessed with that series. And I, I, I started noticing a little bit of a theme that, and this is a generalization, but I felt like women who were closer to my age, um, we, we were all thinking, yeah, I'm team Cecilia. These older guys, <laughs> what they did to her, like, this is not okay. And right. then my friends who were younger than me, like in their twenties, you know, they're team Sean or team Dom. And I did a live with, um, Maxine Mitchell and CJ Bloom a couple of months ago. And we were talking about this and even Maxine said that she's like team Cecilia. <laughs> so, oh, yes. I was team Cecilia the whole time. I mean, yeah. I was just, there was, there was no point where I was rooting for the guys more than I was rooting for her. Right. <laughs> yeah. 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 Cause Oh, I lost your sound. Son just tried to call. Yes. I forgot to put on. Can you hear me now? Yes, I can. 
Can you hear me? <laughs> if you got a phone call, it messes the live up. You'll have to go out and come back in. Sorry. <laughs> it really does mess it up. Hey, How do Nikki? I do that? How do you exit? <laughs> yeah. Um, I think just go up to the top. There's like a power button. And I think you can just hit that. You'll go out and then I'll bring you right back in. <laughs> yes, that happens all the time. I, I forget sometimes to do my do not disturb. But I remember tonight to do it. Yeah, Team Cecilia. I mean, ultimately, Tobias. I mean, I knew as soon as he walked on the scene, I was going to be a Tobias girly. But at the same time, man, I did not. I was really upset with how those guys treated her. And somebody was commenting about one last rainy day. <gasps> Wendy, you're going to Triple Falls. Oh, and I do love a French accent. I can't help it. That's so good. Joe did so well with that. Yes, I'm jealous. Uh, I hope that the colors are pretty there for you guys because I'm I don't live too far away, but we had a drought. And so our colors are awful this year. It didn't rain for two straight months. And so the leaves are just dead and just falling off the trees. There are no pretty colors. Where are you? I'm in Tennessee. Oh, okay. Southeast Tennessee. Yeah. So, oh, Wendy, you don't live too far away either. That's good. Oh, don't be nervous. You're going to have so much fun. It's going to be great. She was talking about the uh, Kate Stewart Triple Falls um, Joe Arden, Maxine Mitchell events, Ravenhood event oh. that's next weekend. Oh, how fun. Yes. It's um, just south of Asheville, North Carolina, like where Triple Falls, the actual Triple Falls, which isn't a city, it's a waterfall, but the fictional Triple Falls is where <laughs> that's it is. That's exciting. I know. That is, that's going to be really fun. Uh, yes, Maxine is going to be there. So exciting. Uh, there was another question I had for you as we were talking about audiobooks. So a lot of your audiobooks are wide, but are some of them Audible exclusive or are they all wide? No, they're, um, I have a, most of them are Audible exclusive. Okay. So there's a difference in, I hate talking about anything with earnings, but the reason that people stay sure. with Audible is just that it, the royalties are higher through Audible if they're exclusive. Um, I just have not found a, as wide of an audience by having it on the other areas, um, on the other retailers. I am, I am trying to figure out when I'm going to be moving them over because now that Spotify also is offering it, mm -hmm. um, but Spotify I think only allows 15 hours a month. So what is that? One audiobook? <laughs> I had the same question when I saw that. I thought, I don't understand. What if it's a longer audiobook? Do they let you just finish that one audiobook? I think but it's even just then, I think hours. one audiobook a month, that's that's not gonna work for me. Right. Right. <laughs> I mean, right. Average at least eight. I mean Where, so do you listen through Audible mostly? I mostly listen through Audible. Um I have Kindle Unlimited. Yeah. So sometimes I'll do the read and listen for free. Or I will borrow the ebook and then purchase the Audible or add on the Audible narration for that discounted price. Right. Um, and then my Audible membership, I go in and out of it. It just depends on do I think I'm actually going to be listening to anything that's currently in the Audible Plus catalog? Ah, okay. So if I'm not, then the Audible subscription is not worth it, in my opinion. Okay. Okay. Um, because you can, if you just want to listen to the Audible Plus library catalog, you can pay yep. $8 a month and listen to as many as you want that are in there. But that's not going to have everything that you want to listen to. Right. So most people do the membership that's like 15 a month. And so you get access to that library, plus you get the credit that you get right. to buy one audiobook with it and keep that one. Um, but I listen to so many indie authors that for the most part, if I do the Kindle Unlimited and then I just add on that narration. Makes more sense. It just, and if an author is wide, 
I will just borrow it through Libby or Hoopla um, yeah. or something like that. So I, I feel like the whole Audible Amazon situation, I feel like weekly I'm explaining it to people how it works because it is very confusing, especially yeah. for new listeners who want to figure out well, what does this mean? Because this is what people will say. They'll say, well, I don't, $15 a month for one audio book, that seems really expensive. I'm like, I understand. Yeah. That's not really what that means. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, you get a credit to keep one, but then you also have access to listen to a library, you know. Yeah. And I know people that use uh, Scribd, Scribd. I know they've just Scribd, gone through a yeah. change. Is it Scribd or Scribd? I've always called it or heard it was called Scribd. Scribd? Yeah, but I don't know oh, that don't that's that. right. <laughs> I need to message somebody there and say, will you please tell us how we're supposed to pronounce this? Kobo also has their audiobooks in Kobo Plus. Yes. Yeah. So that's a, as well. And if you're, so for people who like, for people who are not on um, Kindle Unlimited, like if you like a lot of wide authors that are not on Kindle Unlimited, it might be cheaper to get a Kobo Plus subscription. And then mm -hmm. you can listen and read all of them because they don't require exclusivity. And their programs are cheap. That's fantastic. Yeah, because it's they're in that same price range, right? Like $12 yeah. a month or something? Yeah, yeah, which I so, think is cheap to read as many, you know, however many books you're reading. 100%, 100%. Yeah. I mean, and, and that's the other thing that I always try to educate people on when they say, well, I only want to do it if it's free. And I, and I just say, what entertainment do you currently pay for that you pay for that's not free? Like we pay for Netflix. We pay for every subscription service that you're watching on right. TV. You want to go to a concert, you're going to fork out big money. If you're going to have, you know, Apple Music, you're going to pay monthly for that, like, you have to pay for entertainment. Yeah. Um, so why somebody should... somebody is making that entertainment for you? Right. <laughs> like why why should you not have to pay for books or for audiobooks? And the way I look at it, especially with audiobooks, you know, if you're listening to a 10 hour book, that is 10 hours of entertainment. And if yeah. you are getting it through any of these avenues, you know, even if you're buying it, it's seven dollars and fifty cents. If I rent a movie through oh. Amazon and it's an hour and a half long movie, I'm going to pay at least $5 for that, if not yeah. six or seven. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so I'm getting 10 hours of entertainment versus an hour and a half. Like that's a steal. That's a great yeah. deal. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Without a doubt. Um, there was, I was just going to tell you one other thing and it just went completely out of my head. Um, I don't remember what it was. Never oh, mind. But something I was going to um, maybe suggest to you, or maybe you haven't thought about it before, is every week I get messages from people who live in other countries. Yeah. And they are using audiobooks, romance audiobooks, to learn English. Really? And, yes. Okay. And in some countries, they don't have access to Amazon. They don't have access to Audible or it's very limited or it's really not affordable because of wherever they're at. And so I wondered for some authors who are wide, who they're not exclusive somewhere, yeah. um, if they sell their audiobooks directly through their websites. Yes. So I'm going to be opening, my store will open at the end of January because I'm having it redesigned. Yeah. So I'll, I'm going to sell all of that direct. So people will be able to buy it no matter where they are. Um, and I just remembered what I was going to tell you. So people like free. I have like 14 free books on my website at all times. So anybody who's looking for free, you can go to my website and click freebies. And on that page, you have like, I don't know. I think I have 13 freebies, including the box sets. <clears throat> so yeah, I always, I always feed the freebies, you know, you want to see my writing, take a freebie, see if you like it. Yeah. See if you like it, see if you resonate with it. Yeah. Oh, that's fantastic. But yeah, I just, I thought it was so interesting or still is. Cause like I said, every week I get messages from people who they Does want. Does that mean that, 
are they going to start uh, like is everybody from these other countries who are learning to speak english from romance books are they going to come to our country and be like hey baby girl <laughs> <laughs> maybe <laughs> maybe they come and they they find their people yeah, but i, I mean like, people just so I, funny. I've, i know i've known people in the past though like that's how they've learned english from watching television shows and movies so i mean audiobooks are no different if that's if that's the the platform or the avenue or the art that you want to enjoy, I mean, I how they know? learn it though, because if it's not translated, how do they know what it's? How do you know what it's saying? Do you know what I mean? If it's a foreign language, if right. I were listening to a foreign language, and I didn't have something to look at mm -hmm. to to translate the words, I'm not sure that I would understand it. Well, the messages that I'm getting from people, they're, they're obviously communicating to me in English. Oh, so, true. okay. So it's a, they at least have some. So it's just an aid. English yeah. background. And so it's just aiding. Correct. Yeah. I think it's wonderful. Yeah, I do too. I yeah. mean, who needs, what's that? Um, Rosetta Stone. Who needs Rosetta Stone? Right. <laughs> spicy romance audiobooks. It's way more exciting. Can't go wrong. <laughs> <laughs> can't go wrong. Um, and oh, the other thing about His Wicked Ways uh, that was interesting that I didn't know when I started listening to it is that it's written in third person. Yes. But what I have told people, because even my audio book club, you know, I said something about it and a few people commented like, oh, it's third person. I, don't, that, I why said, is that well, so well, big on TikTok? Is that because of Kindle Unlimited? Because most people on Kindle Unlimited are first person, most books. I guess, or that's just the trends with um, a lot of romance is first person. But yes. so when I started listening to it, I mean, immediately I thought, oh, okay, this is third person. I didn't realize that. But what I've told people, because Andy Arndt and Jacob Morgan, they are so good. And you're right. Oh my God, I love good. them. By the third chapter, I had forgotten that I was in third person. Like it just, it oh, never. Oh, that's wonderful. It just, it never affected me at all. Like I was aware of it just stepping into the story and then psh, it was not a big deal at all. So I've been encouraging I, people. I'm like, no, 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 no. This is not like, this is not your typical third person, hard to connect to the character's story. Like, no, you gotta, you gotta you. listen to it. I, I do write, I, I write a little bit in first just, person. Um, my last release, Hot Mess Summer, that's in first person. And that's also in KU. That's this one. Oh, yes. I love that cover, by the way. Thank you. I do, too. That That is loosely based on my summer of 2021. It's oh. so fucking funny. <laughs> it's so funny. Um, but that one's in KU, and that one is first person. But I I keep going back and forth because I love work. I, I'm used to writing third person, and I enjoy writing third person. Writing first person is so much of a faster right for mm -hmm. me like the word just come quicker um and so i debated doing one of my next series in first person just more because it was so refreshing to write that last one in first person so but i have noticed that on TikTok, the people are like first person first person and i'm like wait this didn't used to be the thing right. um so i wondered if it was if it was ku and it was that most of the ku authors are first person uh, probably I yeah. mean, can you, I know Amazon has its issues and we all have issues with it and authors yeah. have its issues with KU and I get that, but KU has opened up a, we lost so your... many people. Oh, my sound. It's because I have alarms on my phone for when I'm supposed to post or I forget to post. Oh. And so it just keeps going off. So I just keep dismissing <laughs> it. Um, but I mean, Kindle Unlimited, that's how I stepped back into reading. You know, yeah. it's, it was so accessible. There were so many options and it was just right there. Yeah. So I get it. it. it has I totally get good. it. It has definitely done a lot of good. Uh, let's see. There was a question. I spend thirty dollars a month for books and audiobook subscription services. Absolutely worth it. Yeah. I mean, you could. I dropped cable. I had basic cable. <laughs> I, I basic I cable anymore. Used, 
<laughs> right? Um, I, basic cable that I kept because I had some friends and we used to watch The Bachelor on Monday nights. I kept it for one television show. It was $30 yeah. a month. So after about a year of that, I canceled that subscription because I, I would rather spend it on audiobooks and books. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I've had cable for five years, maybe six years. I don't know. But I have every other subscription service you could, you could want. Like they add up. They add up. It's like they, phones. When, you know, 10, 10 years ago, I think we paid what, $30 a month for a home phone. Now right. it's, I don't even want to tell you what I pay because I pay for all my, my boys' phones. But yeah, I, it's crazy. Well, I have to remind myself that it's a computer. It is not just a phone. Right. It's everything. It's a computer. And it's it does a lifeline. Everything. So yes. <laughs> I it am is on, a lifeline. I am on it all day, every day, constantly. Um, real fast before we hop off, I wanted to ask you about book signings for 2024. Have you announced where all you're going to be or you're trying to? I have to not. Out? Okay. Yeah, I'm still trying to figure it out. There is a, there is a chance. I got this hair up my ass that I really wanted to go to Italy um, for two and a half months. And so there is a chance that I'm going to do that. And I'm just trying to figure out the timing before I commit to anything else. Cause I would go there, write a book and, you know, immerse myself in that culture, um, and then come back. So, I, but I'm not sure if I want to go in the spring or the fall and I'm just trying to figure all that out first. Okay. Oh, so <laughs> the, the book would, uh, maybe be inspired by your time in Italy. Not the one that I would write while I'm there because I have all of the books planned that I have to write through the summer of 2024, um, but one that would follow. Yes, it would be there. Oh, that's so fun. <laughs> I would imagine anyway, as, unless I hate it. Like if I get there oh, and I hate it. I don't, I don't think happen. you will, I don't think you will. I've been to Italy once and I was in Milan and it was, it was beautiful. The food was amazing. Yeah. That's what I hear. That's what I hear. So I just figure I would go, I, you know, I can write anywhere. And right. I love small towns. Like, so I love them so much. Um, and so I figured I would go for two and a half months someplace else. And I can find one of the little towns in Italy where I can walk to the market and walk to the gelato place and the cafes and the water and be good. So we'll see. Oh, that sounds great. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. Thank you. And I'm so happy that you liked his Wicked Way. That makes me really happy. I did. It's a special I really, book. I really, really enjoyed it. I'm so glad. Yeah, it is a special story. It definitely made me curious about the rest of the series because I got to see all of these characters. And They're so different. I think you'd like yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. I love it, though. I love your writing. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for chatting with me tonight. This was so fun. And and I've had a great time. Yeah, it was great getting to know you a little bit more. And hopefully people who have been just popping in and out the whole time um, heard about you and want to go pick up one of your books and go get some of those freebies off your website. Get some of the freebies. Check out the books. I do have some in KU. I've got uh, three different series and then Hot Mess Summer Standalone. So thank you so much. <laughs> All right. Well, have a good night and I will talk to you again soon, I'm sure. All right. See you. Bye. Bye. Bye.